Hi people, welcome to the Cowbridge Kitchen. We're here exclusively to show you guys how to cook like a pro. Okay, going to show you some tips, going to show you some tricks and a few little nifty workarounds so that you get it right first time, every time. So, uh, back in the Cowbridge Kitchen, what we're going to do today is study things that you can do with an OXO cube and a beef bovril. Okay, what today we're going to make, um, we are going to make a steak and stout pie. Um, in the slow cooker. So we're going to make the mix up in the slow cooker and then turn that into a pie. So um, we've got some lean uh, beef here. Okay, that's going to be obviously um, cooked off in the slow cooker. And oxo and bovril make up a, a mix, a paste to add the flavour to it. Okay, so let's get this pie sorted out. Okay, so first of all what we're going to do, and we're going to cut up some veg, okay? We're going to cut up some spring onions uh, some brown onions, some carrots, and some celery. Okay, so I'll get these cut up. You'll find videos on um, chopping these up on my on my channel. Okay, um, but there we are. You can take a little look at them. Once we've got these, use a sharp knife. Once we've got these veggies cut up and diced, we'll come back and we'll show you what to do with them. So we've got our um, onions, but effectively all cut up now. Okay, so we've probably got about three spring onions in there, and two sticks of celery in there. Okay, so they're cut up into little halves there. Um, one brown onion all cut up into sort of rough dice. Okay, what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you the carrots quickly. Okay, because the carrots we're going to treat them slightly differently. Peel your carrot. Get one of these sort of peelers here. Don't be too fussy with it. Get all of that. Um, outer skin off okay so there they are once the outer skin is off on the carrot then I'm just clear that little bit of a mess up there okay what you do then chop the end off chop the other end off okay so our carrot is now nicely cut up we're just going to cut these now into circles okay just um just basically slice them Voila. Okay, and the reason I'm showing you the carrots is because what we're going to do with these, and um, because this is going to be cooked in a slow cooker, your carrots aren't going to cook that well, so I'm going to part cook them, okay? So carrots into a bowl, like so, and then once I put the other carrot in there, we're going to get that onto a stove while we prep the rest of it up, um, so those carrots can just soften a little bit. There we are, so our carrots are now cut um, and in a pan of water. Okay, we can get this on some nice medium heat. Um, don't add any, to any salt to the water or anything, just get basically, my aim here is just to get those carrots soft. Um, so we're gonna leave them go now and we'll take a little look at the rest of the prep. Okay, if you have seen um, any of my videos, you'll know by now probably that I, I quite like making pastes, okay? I, 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 a lot of paste, I think they work really well. So what I'm going to do for this um, this, this beef and stout casserole, and then I'm going to make a paste again, okay? Like I showed earlier at the beginning of this video, oxo, uh, barbecue, a few other ingredients. So I'll show you how to make the paste, which is going to give that um, that stew, basically, which we're going to make. Um, it, it, and we're going to make that into a, a pie filling. It's going to give it all the flavour it needs. So, the pastes. First of all, um, again, one oxo. We'll get this oxo um, all ground up, just squeeze it up with your hands there, it should grind up quite nicely into the bowl. Next ingredient, the bottle cube. Okay, um, from my experience with these bottle cubes is that they, they don't break very easily, they're quite hard, okay? So what you could maybe just spend a little bit of time here and get that all ground up as best you can into the oxo. So we've got a whole load of beef flavour going on in there. With just those two, those two ingredients. There we are. We can get that all mixed in. There you go. Okay, um, we're going to add uh, chili powder. I like chili powder. Added to quite a few of my uh, my recipes. Again, you don't want to add too much as to make it angry, but you just want to add a real level and make sure that it is level. Okay, a level t uh, teaspoon of chili powder into that. That's going to give this um, this pie a whole new meaning. Okay, sage, um, using dried sage again, just purely for convenience. Get yourself 
probably two teaspoons of sage into there. The ever reliable veg bouillon or veg stock, okay. Just one teaspoon of that. And then we're gonna add some tomato puree. While we're adding the tomato puree, flip the kettle on just to make sure that, that is boiling. So a nice generous amount. There we go. A good four teaspoons probably of, uh, of tomato puree. Okay, now my kettle is boiled, as if by magic. Add enough in here now just to make that into a thick paste. There we are, mix it all up. Nice thick paste. There we are. And that smells, smells pretty good. Um, add a little bit more just so that the paste is workable. There we go. Okay, so we've got a pretty decent paste there. Okay, a bit globby, not too thin, not too thick. That's gonna be, that's gonna form the base of our flavor. Okay, let's move on to getting these ingredients into the slow cooker. Okay, so over at the slow cooker, um, big, pretty basic standard slow cooker here, okay? Warm, low and high settings on it. Take the lid off that, whack it onto high. Okay, we're gonna cook this on high. Get your onions now, okay, that we chopped up. Tip them in the slow cooker. Mix them in a little bit now with the spoon. Okay, get your celery that we mixed up earlier. Tip it in the slow cooker. Think you're getting the idea now. <laughs> hey, not very difficult. Okay, your spring onions that we chopped up earlier. Guess what? Tip them in the slow cooker. Okay, so we're gonna throw them in there and what we're gonna do now, okay, our um, diced beef uh, that we had earlier, um, we're going to throw that in the slow cooker as well. All pretty basic stuff. Okay, so that diced beef and any juice that came with it into the slow cooker on top of all of your veggies. There we are. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to let that just cook away there for a little while until those carrots get added to it. Um, once they're cooked on the stove, which they should probably take about 10 minutes. Okay, so our carrots have been cooking for about 10 minutes or so. They're just soft enough now, so the knife just goes through them and they hold on, look. Well, almost hold on. There we are. Okay, it's not going to hold on, but that's how they're cooked. So they can go straight in now to our, um, into our slow cooker. There we are. So as you can see, all our carrots, beef, onion, celery, and um, spring onions all into the slow cooker. Okay. We're going to add on top of that now um, our um, secret ingredient, our super secret ingredient, okay, which is our stout. So we'll put the stout in. Once the stout is in there, then we'll add our flavour mix, and that's it. It's going to cook. So one can of stout. This is 330 millilitres of um, just original stout beer, bitter, whatever. Don't really drink this. Prefer a Heineken myself. But that is going in that pot. Okay, so let's get this open. Yeah. Okay, the whole lot of this stout in the pot. There we are. Okay, and then the next step is we're gonna mix in now our paste that we made up earlier. Whoa, the smell coming off that. I don't know whether to eat it or drink it. Um, I think we'll, we'll give it a miss because it's still rather early in the morning. We'll get that in. <clears throat> Spoon. Now we're going to mix this all in now, okay? Get it all mixed up. It doesn't matter what's on top of what. What we want now is to get that mixed into there. Already smelling pretty, pretty beautiful. There we go. And that is now looking good. I'll give you a quick view of that and then we're going to leave it. It's going to stay on high and we're going to leave it for four hours, okay? Four hours. So it's been about four hours um, since our beef um, and our, our vegetables were put into the slow cooker. So we're going to take a look at it now and then we're going to add a thickening agent to that just to um, convert it into a sort of a pie filling. If you want to leave it as a stew, then it's done now. 
I'm going to make it into a pie, so I'm going to add a thickening agent, show you to make that quickly, um, and then we'll get that in there, and then it can stay in there for another couple of hours on low. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, let's take a little look inside here. And there we are, there's our stew. I think you can get a good look at that from there. Okay, looking quite tasty. Okay, let's pop the lid back on that now. So we don't want it to get too cold. We're going to go on over to the stove now and take a look at the thickening agent. Okay, so thickening up our um, our mix. Okay, we've probably seen this a few times to be honest, because I, I you know I make quite a few of them. I'm going to use a bit of beef dripping again, and we're going to get that melted in. So yeah, you guessed, we're going to make a little bit of a roux. Um, not going to make it too thick. Um, it's probably not as thick as normal, um, because we're going to add that then to the slow cooker and. We'll watch that thicken up. Okay, so we just let that melt um, and we get that room in. Okay, as we can see, our beef dripping has now um, melted away. So we're going to add some flour to this. Okay, this is going to be uh, trial and error, I suppose, in many ways. I'm going to start off with two decent teaspoons of flour and then we'll mix that up. I'll show you the consistency we want to get this to now. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a little tiny bit too thick so this is good because it gives me a chance to show you what to do if it does go too thick you can just add a small drop of dripping back into there okay and let that melt into it all right that'll thin it back out again probably <clears throat> probably to about the right consistency where we want it if you don't like beef dripping um, even though it does give it a good flavor to a beef stew uh, funnily enough you can use lard um, or, or, or whatever you like. You can even use butter if you like, but you've got to remember if you use butter, that's going to add an artificial um, an artificial flavour to it, okay? So there we are, that's where we want that, okay? There we are, we'll let that melt a little time bit further. We're going to put that straight into the slow cooker. Okay, so we're back over at the slow cooker now. We'll just get the lid off that. Oh, that is such, such a great smell. Um, it smells beautiful. Beef has now gone to the point where it's going to fall apart. Carrots are nice and soft, pretty important, which is why we cooked them in the first place, okay? Add them, um, take your, your roux now that we made earlier, we're just going to tip it in, okay? Don't put the whole lot in, put half of it in, and then get that mixed up and see what the consistency is like, okay? It should start to thicken up quite nicely. If you need more, stick some more in. If you want it quite you can see that is already starting to thicken up pretty nicely. Um, right, we'll show you our consistency in a sec. There we are, the whole lot of that is what was needed. There we are. All looking pretty good in there now. And that is a rather nice pie mix. Okay, given now... Um, the pie mix is all, all done and finished. We've added the thickening agent to it, okay? Thicken that up. We used the whole lot that we made um, and it, it got it to a beautiful consistency. Now that that's done, what we need to do is to get some pastry, um, which we've got a video up here to show you how to make uh, pastry that's going to be ideal for this pie. Okay, so we'll get our pastry out now. And we'll put our pie together. So now our pastry is um, out of the fridge. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it on a chopping board at room temperature. You just need to get it pliable now. So that's probably going to be left at room temperature um, an hour, maybe, hour and a half. So we'll leave that there. Once it's all nice and pliable, then I'll show you how to um, roll that out and, and get the whole pie constructed. Okay, so what we've done here, we've taken our piece of pastry, the piece that we had left over, we've rolled this out into a nice large circular piece um, big enough way to fit into this um, into this uh, pie pie dish here that we've got okay so we're going to move this out of the way there we are pop that over there into the actual dish <clears throat> I'm just going to put a splash of olive oil okay and I'm going to rub that around I'm going to coat the um, it's a disposable dish this obviously you can probably tell from the noise that it's making that it's not uh, not a quality pie dish by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, there we are. Get that all nice and covered there. So we've got our pie dish 
um, covered and our pastry base here ready to go into that. There we are. So what we're going to do now at this stage, okay, we've got this quite thin, okay, there we are. We can see how thin that is now. I'm going to put that over the top of that pie dish. And we're just going to fit it in there with our fingers. So lifting the edges up, fit it in to the pie dish without breaking it, of course. Um, all the way around, okay. Obviously, you don't. I mean, you know, you don't need to be too uh, too clinical about this. All right, we just want to get that in there, so we've got a nice pie base there. Okay. I mean, obviously, I'm using um, I'm using a disposable pie dish because, believe it or not, I don't actually have a pie dish. Um, so we're going to go with the uh, with, with, with the disposable one. Okay, once that's in there, <clears throat> you can take yourself uh, get yourself a knife. Okay, and what we're going to do is just trim around those edges there. There we are. Look, absolutely lovely. All the way around. Squash that all down. Okay, thumbprints now all the way around the edge. There we are. Bit of pastry left there, so we can form a pattern if we want to. That's what we're going to put our pie in. Right, okay, so now we've got our um, pastry base in our pie dish uh, here. We're going to literally, we're going to take our lid off our slow cooker. We're going to get the ingredients, we're going to get the pie now into the pie dish. Okay, so we're going to take it straight out of the slow cooker and straight into the pie dish. And then we're going to fill that up. Ah, with all of that, it smells absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so our puff pastry, or our pastry, um, it might be slightly puffed, hopefully, is been out of the fridge now and cooling down at room temperature for a fair while. So we're going to unwrap it from the cling film. There we go. Okay, and if you just, you know, you can feel it, it bends, look, it's nice, it's decent. Okay, get that there. What we're going to do, again, floury surface, and expect much mess from me yet again. Um, but there we are. That's uh, the nature of baking, I guess. Get that floured. Get that all nice and floured. And we're going to roll it. <clears throat> okay, we're going to roll it. I'm not going to be able to roll it into a perfect circle, obviously. But we are going to roll it out so we can get a nice lid out of this. And again, you'll notice from my lack of rolling skills my complete inability to be a baker. Uh, but there we are. Let's get this rolled out. And it's rolling out, because it's, it's, it's cooled down now to room temperature, this is rolling out so lovely. Um, it, it's, it's just a nice piece of pastry. There we are. So what we'll do is we'll get it into a kind of rough square. We'll consume all of that flour again, so we're kind of cleaning up with our piece of pastry as we go. And what I'm going to do, my plan is, um, because of my lack of baking experience, I'm going to make it just big enough to go over the top, and then we're going to cut it into the right size once it's on there. That's my plan, and that's what I'm going to stick to. Okay, here we are. Look at that. A complete, a complete amateur's attempt at rolling out a bit of pastry. But there we are. So don't feel too bad if uh, if this goes a little bit odd on you. It happens to the best of us. Okay, so we've got our rolled out pastry now. We're just going to sling that up there. We're going to bring our pie back into the uh, back into the focus, and we're going to pop this lid now from here straight over on the pie. So there we are, up and over. Look at, at that. There we are. This is going to go. There we are. I'm going to pinch the edges of this now with my thumb. Okay, so we get that nice pie pattern going on just there. And once again, then with your knife, you just want to trim it off. Okay, and we've got quite a lot of pie. Um, a lot of pastry left over there okay so this pie now is going to go straight into the oven um, so we've got a preheated oven going on down here now um, about 180 or so 
pie in the oven probably take about 30 to 45 minutes okay just keep it just before we put the pie in the oven we're gonna um just get one egg one egg into a cup okay and we're gonna just generously cover this pie with this bit of egg wash there we are okay so the pie has got a nice egg wash all over the edge of it there all over the top of it and we're going to get that now into our preheated oven and leave it there for 40 minutes so the pie is finished the pie has been in the oven for approximately 30 minutes um 30, 30 35 minutes okay so we can take a little look at the pie um and and see what you think uh...